we're at Port Town Beach and uh, what are we going to do Paul? Well we're going to cook up a bit of food and we're going to have a surf and uh, we're just going to generally chill out. Chris has been surfing for hundreds of years and uh, but it was Chris that persuaded me into surfing really when I moved down here about 10 years ago. I thought it was a bit too old to surf but Chris persuaded me out on the longboard and it took a little while but uh, now I'm completely hooked. Yeah, yeah they're never too old to surf. No. Even, even at my age. I yeah. think. No, I don't, I don't think anybody's ever too old to surf. I think that's quite important. And I don't, as well, I think you're never too old to surf in your mind either. So poor. <laughs> it's beaten to crap, <laughs> and it's made from a home blown blank though, so therefore it doesn't absorb water, so therefore they stay really light. And that's off Tom Robinson Power in the Darkness album which we, you're not meant to spray on public property it said and so that's MAD which is make a difference which everybody should I mean for me it's just changed my outlook on life you know I operate up at Trelisk as a surgeon we've got windows in the theatre I can see the I can see the uh, the wind farm up on Chiverton so I know when it's an offshore wind uh, but you've been surfing since you were a kid, haven't you? Yeah, I kind of always been around the beach for some of my earliest memories with my parents being at the beach. I usually skip at this point. <laughs> oh, no, I do. Come on. I had my first proper stand-up surfboard, Malibu board when I was about 12, who didn't go to university, didn't do any of those things, failed all my A-levels. So kind of, um, then in 1990, I'd been traveling around the world, seeing all kinds of lovely places, and I came back and our beaches were horrible really, being covered with human sewage and I was lucky enough to be one of the founders of Surfers Against Sewage and which I then again was hugely lucky to be able to run for 10 years from 1990 to 2000. That's how you got your MBE isn't it Chris? Moaning bloody environmentalist. Yeah. Yes, I think <laughs> at which point I think you might go to the tower for that. So I've now got a little company that I've set up called A Grain of Sand. Um, the strap line is small, irritating, but out comes the odd pearl. Um, and it's about delivering and helping to drive positive change in lots of aspects of our lives, from serious bit of environmentalism to the food we eat, the way we engage with our local community and our local environment. And then extending that out onto a global level. And it's about linking up with anybody who wants to stir up a little bit of trouble and push things forward. I think there's an important thing in life which is that you know actually it's good to give something back it's good to make a difference with your life and to serve in some way or other and I think you know I've been lucky enough to have those opportunities in my life and you do do that you what you do as a surgeon is to give some stuff back well I do and I get paid for it obviously but I uh, yeah, I think well, part, well, part of the joy of the job really is, is the fact you're dealing with people and, and, and one of the extraordinary things in my job is that you know, the, uh, the actual job involves helping people and making people feel better and there's a, yeah, there's a huge privilege in that I think and, uh, and that gives me a great deal of satisfaction in my life I think. Yeah. quandaries of modern world is that everybody's running around feeling like they're you know busy and they're driving forwards and they're doing things but it's all a bit hollow because actually money doesn't make you happier you know once you've got a roof over your head you're warm and the family are kind of like clothed and fed and that money doesn't make you any happier it's connecting with people and connecting with the planet in which we live that's what tunes you in and makes you happy. I saw a great sign on the back of a car the other day. It said, uh, "Perform a, a daily act of random kindness." And uh, you know, and uh, you know, yeah. I thought that was a, a, a special little message. Really, you can easily do that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> was that your act of kindness? That, that was my little kind act. <laughs> Give you a hug.
today, as opposed to Big Wednesday, this is reasonably sized, well, it's reasonably cross small cross shore Friday. Cross -shore Friday. <laughs> yeah. But so. we're doing it and we're doing this as a celebration for Kate. <laughs> <laughs> so, not that we look, which one do you think, where's spot the similarity? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Five, six years now. It's 1966 high top, so it was originally looked similar to this, but it was in Austria it was made. It was a, a closed delivery van, so they had a pole along the back and put their clothes in there. But uh, about three or four years ago, I converted it inside, so it's a bit of a surf wagon really. And I get a lot of uh, enjoyment out of it. Take to work most times as well, and of course we surf all year round, so it's nice and warm to get changed inside as well. Uh, they have been used as ambulances in the past, so uh, hence the little red cross on the front. I think that's that's an original VW ambulance sign. I was hoping it might get me into uh, the hospital car park free, but I still have to pay. <laughs> We've got fresh hand-picked scallops from the fishmongers in St Agnes. We'll fry those up with some chorizo. That's the only thing that probably isn't from Cornwall. We have some um, Cornish-grown asparagus. Lovely. There. A little, little bit woody. A little bit woody. So I'll the, the end bottom of those, yeah. Chop the bottom off that. Um, and one of the things that we like to say about asparagus is that we particularly like asparagus because it makes your wee smell funny. And Chris likes to say that. Uh, yeah, I, I, anything to do with wee and poo is kind of like big in my world. It gets a little bit woody on the end, so oh, yeah. probably best to take those off. There's something nice about cooking outdoors, isn't there? Okay, we're going to use my, my bowl here, which... Uh, it's not got the highest pressure in the world, but it'll work. It'll work. We'll put some potatoes in here. I, well, I, I really love the earthy taste in potatoes as well, so I don't really want to take the skin off them and uh, they'll just give them a little clean. I think uh, Chris's immune system is very good, I'm sure he's going to be able to cope. Yeah. yeah. The only problem about this bowl is it does look a little bit medical and uh, a lot of my friends, uh, as I'm in the medical profession, are a little bit suspicious about uh, exactly what it's used for. But uh, the ingenious thing here, you can see, is that I'm going to tip away the water drains down into the bottom here, goes down a little pipe behind the wheel, out the front and into Chris's wetsuit. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> okay Chris, so what's the, what's the plan? We're going to steam the asparagus, are we? Yeah, so if you top, yeah. fit them in there, you'll probably have to curl, okay. well you might have to chop them a little bit, or curl them around. Well, I'll chop them, I can chop them. Pop that on there. Yeah, it's probably it's 
cool. Yes, that's going to start steaming away or something. So I usually kind of like pull the little bits of pooey stuff off and then we'll give them a little bit of a scrub. Okay, let's have a little look, see how that asparagus looks. Oh, pinch one of those. Oh, that looks lovely, doesn't it? Take one of those out. Just nick one. What do you think? Mm hmm. Yeah, any time we want. A little thing that we've got here, it's not actually Tullamore Dew uh, Irish whiskey. This is argan oil. And argan oil comes from a specific latitude in Morocco between kind of Agadir and Essaouira. <laughs> and what they do is they just dunk a little bit of bread in. And in Morocco, bread is called, well, around that area, it's called chobs. Oh, that's really nice, really nutty, isn't it? Mm. And if you've ever been to Morocco and seen the goats in the trees, that's argan trees. Mm. Yeah, kids love that, seeing goats in the trees. Mm. I don't know how you pick them. <laughs> nice. Right, we better get the um, chorizo. I've washed the scallops. Okay. Are you going to do them in with the chorizo, yeah? Yep. Yeah. There we go. The scallops in, and then we just need to well, uh, and they'll literally sear really quite quickly. Turn those over. We don't really need to do those for very long. No. What I'm going to do is. Okay. Is it lovely, Chris? Chorizo there. Finish those. Oh, oh, oh. Look at that. And there we go. Look at that. Lovely. All Cornish. Awkward from around here, except the chorizo, but everything else, beautiful, close, local, and let's have a little taste of that. Wow. Say